Hello everyone, wonderful greetings for the day. In the coming videos, we will focus on the important DBMS topics like the relational calculus, both the tuple relational calculus and the domain relational calculus. We will formulate some queries. SQL, the structured query language, normalization, transactions and transaction control, concurrency control, file structures, indexing and hashing and whatnot. In today's presentation, we are going to focus on the tuple relational calculus with the formal definition. We have already seen about relational algebra where relational algebra is a procedural language. What do we mean by a procedural language? Whenever we want some output, we need to give in the sequence of procedures that generates the answer to our queries. But relational calculus, in contrast, is a non-procedural query language. It means, if we want to get the desired information, we need not give the complete sequence of procedures in order to get those information. In simple terms, we can simply mention what is required. How it should be taken, the system will take care of it. Say, in relational algebra, we need to explicitly mention what is required and how to get those data. But in relational calculus, we can mention only what is required and how it is done, we need not worry about it. And how a query structure looks here in relational calculus to be precise, the tuple relational calculus. The query in tuple relational calculus looks like this. What do we mean by this? It means the set of all tuples such that the predicate is true for that tuple t. And it's important to know about what is a free variable and what is a bounded variable. In tuple relational calculus, we call a variable as a free variable unless it is quantified by an existential or universal quantifier. Existential means there exists an x such that is an existential quantifier. Universal quantifier means for every x or for all x. I'll just give you an example. In this example, this t is a tuple variable and this tuple variable belongs to the instructor and if there exists another tuple variable, yes, which belongs to the department, such that the department name is the same on the tuple variable t and the department name on the tuple variable s. Yes. And this is an example query in tuple relational calculus. So what is this t? This t and s are tuple variables. In this example, if you note here, this t is a free variable because this tuple variable t is not bound by any quantifier. Whereas this s is a bound variable because this s is actually quantified by existential quantifier. It means there exists yes such that. Let's now see how to formulate a tuple relational calculus formula. See, we want our queries to be answered by the system. Whatever we write as a query, that is basically built up of formula. And formulas are built out of atoms. Shortly, we are going to see what is a formula and how atoms constitute a formula. And in this presentation, we are going to understand what is a formula, how we can write a formula, how multiple formulas can be combined together, when we will call a formula as a valid formula, and when we write an expression using multiple formulas, we also wanted to check whether that expression is a safe expression or not. Let's come to the point. A tuple relational calculus formula is built up out of atoms. How? I'll explain this. When we say that S belongs to R, it means this R is the relation and S is a tuple variable. So if you note here, we have atoms like S belongs to R and combining all these, we get a formula. And we have formulas like this also. When we say this S of X, we can use some comparative operators and we can use the other tuple variables. In this example, this x is an attribute on which the tuple variable s is defined. In this side, if you note, this y is an attribute on which the tuple variable u is defined. So if you take a relation, say we'll take a relation r, obviously this relation will be comprised of attributes and tuples, where we call the tuples as rows and we call the attributes as columns, where this x and y are referred to be attributes, I mean they are the columns, and S and U are referred as the tuple variables. Is there any need that a tuple relational formula should always be having a tuple variable this side and this side? No, it need not be the case. The right hand side may also be a constant. Say for example, in this case, we have an attribute X that is defined on the tuple variable S 
But in the right hand side, we can see C a constant because there are some situations where we may need to address a specific condition. For example, we want to find out the list of all employees who are drawing the salary of $10,000. In this case, the right hand side should be $10,000. We will see more about the atoms. Basically, an atom is a formula. So, we are talking about the relational calculus. Actually, they are built upon the predicate calculus. If we say P1 is a formula, then so are negation of P1 and P1. This is a simple formula. For example, if P1 and P2 are formulae, then so are P1 or P2, P1 and P2 and P1 implies P2. These are all possible only when P1 and P2 are formulae. We have just seen what is a formula in the previous slide. If you still need some clarity, I request you to watch the previous slide and come back to this place so that you will understand about formulae. Let's continue dealing with this. If P1 of S is a formula containing a free tuple variable, yes. When we will call a tuple variable as a free tuple variable, if it is not associated with any of the quantifier, whether it is an existential or universal quantifier. If P1 of S is a formula containing a free tuple variable S, and we have a relation R, R is a relation, then there exists S that belongs to relation R if P1 of S is true. That is, this formula is true. And not only that, we can also use for all or for every S belongs to R, this P1 of S is true. I mean, this formula is true. In simple terms, if P1 of S is a formula which contains a tuple variable S and R is a relation, then we can use both quantifiers, existential quantifier as well as universal quantifier. And if we have two formula P1 and P2, then this is equal unto negation of negation of P1 or negation of P2. Just see like this, if we are bringing this inside, negation of negation gets cancelled, we will end up with P1 only. This negation brings this or into and and then this negation makes this negation cancel. So, negation of negation P1 or negation P2 will give P1 and P2 since P1 and P2 are formula. For all T that belongs to R P1 of T, this is also equal unto negation of if there exists T that belongs to R which is negation of P1 T. For example, if we are bringing negation on both the sides, for all quantifier will become if there exists quantifier. And here, P1 of T becomes negation of P1 of T. This is how we can build formulas. P1 implies P2 is equivalent to negation of P1 or P2. Before we step into the next topic, we will quickly revisit the points in a glimpse. So basically, this tuple relational calculus containing formulas that satisfy the predicate calculus formulas. So basically, a formula in a tuple relational calculus will have a set of attributes and constants. For example, if we are referring to salary equal to 10,000, where salary is the attribute and 10,000 is the constant. Say we are comparing salary is equal to 10,000, we can also use other operators like lesser than, lesser than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. In case we have multiple formulas, then we can go for connectives like and or even if we want to negate, then we can go for negation operation which gives the not of the value. True means false, false means true. As mentioned, this is a predicate relational calculus. So, this is also satisfying the implication rule which uses P1 implies P2. In other words, if P1, then P2. And coming to the last one, since tuple relational calculus follows the predicate approach, then obviously this will also use the quantifiers existential and universal. There exist such that and for all or for every. Before we sign out, let's see the safety of expressions. One of the serious issues to be addressed is writing a proper tuple relational calculus expression. So if we don't handle the expressions well, we may end up in generating an infinite relation because a tuple relational calculus is basically a non-procedural language where we will mention only what is required. So if we don't write the expression properly, we may end up in generating an infinite relation. For example, in this case, if you note, we are writing an expression like this, where the set of all tuples, where the predicate is not. The tuple belongs to the instructor and we use a negation here. 
the problem with this is we should not allow such kind of expressions because there may be many tuples that are not in the instructor relation but what we have written we have written set of all tuples that are not in the instructor relation the problem is there may be many tuples that are not in the instructor relation and we should not allow any such expressions and we call such expressions as unsafe expressions and how to handle these unsafe expressions we are introducing the concept of domain of a tuple relational formula how this domain solves the problem of unsafe expressions suppose if we are defining a domain like this domain of p it means the set of all values that appear in an expression will be there in one or more relations and this guarantees the finite results say if we are defining a domain and that domain is containing the set of all values that appear in an expression then we will definitely not end up in infinite relations so the expression when we write using domains should guarantee finite results i'll give you one example say if we are writing an expression like this t belongs to instructor and t of salary is greater than 80000 and that is actually inside a domain now what do we mean by this it means this is the set containing 80000 and all the values appearing in any attribute of any tuple in the instructor relation so this guarantees us from ending up in an infinite relation so we can simply say the set of all tuples such that the predicate on the tuple is true is safe if all values in the result are from the domain domain of p we will see more about domains in the domain relational calculus topic for now let's have only the basics and that's it guys I hope now you understood the basics of tuple relational calculus. In the next presentation we will see some queries in tuple relational calculus. I'll see you in the next presentation and thank you for watching.